on this episode, we are preparing for the final push. Oh, the easy stuff is done. Now comes the hard stuff. This is a time for rock solid decision making. We're hacking it, boys. We're hacking it. Leonardo DiCaprio is already pointing at the screen. Lazy devs, right? <laughs> it's in the name. Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode 80 of our advanced shmup tutorial. We are just, mm, there's gonna be, mm, there's something special coming up on the next episode, but today we are finishing up all the remaining pieces also. I'm so disappointed with you. I'm so disappointed. Nobody told me that I didn't turn on my Gundam on the last episode. Ugh. <laughs> Today what we're gonna do is um, we are, there's a question that we kind of like, um, we kind of put off for a very long time, which is like this bullet origin question. I wanna address this. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about retargeting. I'm probably not gonna solve the retargeting, but um, uh, I'm going to discuss why we're not gonna solve the retargeting now. Uh, I wanna deal with enemy fire sounds, and then later on we're gonna maybe go through our to-do list and see how far we got down the to-do list, the master plan, and plan the next episode. Um, before we go there, a um, quick follow-up on the bullet seating. So last episode we did bullet seating, you remember. You can fly here and now you can be stay here and now the, the left enemies are not firing but the right enemy is firing. Mm. Uh, maybe the bullet seating range should be increased a little bit but also um, I posted it to Actain and Actain give me, give, give me some feedback. Actain said that this is something that obviously, I mean, very logical is that if the bullets are flying faster, then the range of the bullet seating should be wider. Makes sense. Uh, if the bullets are slower and you don't need as much of a range on the bullet seating, that, that makes sense. Um, but also he suggested, he suggested something else, and that is, um, or he asked me a question that I thought was very useful, which is like, can you seal all three of those enemies? And I can't quite now. Uh, if I stay above the one of the enemies, there's always going to be one that's not quite, or is very, very difficult to get the all three enemies into the ceiling range. Um, and that is an excellent question for me, I think, because yes, obviously. So the bullet ceiling uh, and the, uh, the bullet uh, speeds, and also, of course, the level design, they all have to work together, right? Uh, so if for bullet ceiling to really uh, be really useful, you, you have to have like those situations where uh, you know, taking advantage of it is a big deal, right? So here in this case, I mean, you, it's definitely easier to solve this problem when with bullet seating in place. But for example, this is this is a nice place for, for, for this, where it totally works. So there are these two ships here, right? And you you are kind of safe staying above them because they won't you know, shoot at, uh, they won't shoot at you, right? So there is this, there are situations that, that we accidentally created here where bullet seating can be applied very effectively. Uh, but later on, when we do go through another pass of this, when you design a new level, it makes sense to keep in mind our bullet seeding range. And when we create, for example, uh, tanks somewhere on the in, in the in the in the level, that we keep in mind what our ceiling range is, and maybe we have to tweak the ceiling range right, um, later on. But broadly speaking, it's roughly in the ballpark, maybe a little bit too small. Okay, so let us move on to bullet origin, and for that. I think I want to go to the enemy editor. All right, so this is the enemy editor and here we're defining a lot of things about the enemy and I want to add uh, new parameters to the enemy. One parameter I want to add is this idea that I want to specify a position from which the bullets are being fired. Uh, there's going to be two values, an X and Y value, right? And then I'm going to specify a second position from which the bullets are can be fired. I want to specify two positions from which the bullets are being fired for enemy. I think two covers most of our cases. And if there's ever going to be an enemy where it's like, ah, it would be great if we had a third, then we're going to add a third <laughs> down the line. But first I want to just add to the system that, that we can do this. Okay. So, um, I mean, now we're getting like a lot of information per enemy, right? So it's good that we have like this ability to shrink, shrink the amount of enemies. All right, so here are the captions. Okay, so here's, we're gonna add um, B1X, B1Y, B2X, and then B2Y. 
like this. And now I just need to fill the stuff with data. Um, for now, let me just fill it with zeros. All right, something like this. So I fill it with zeros basically. And in fact, um, the reason, like I, I don't even have values for B to X for most of the enemies because the way, the reason why I want to put them at the end of each line is that I want to, like if I don't have to, like I don't want to have to specify the uh, the shooting locations if it doesn't apply to the enemy I'm working on. If it's like a popcorn enemy that only shoots from one place, then I don't have to specify a second one. I can just stop um, adding more values to that line and, and move on to the next line. And then every value that isn't filled in will be just declared as nil or, or zero or whatever. Um, that's why I want to add them at the end and not like somewhere in between there, because if it's somewhere in between there, then I cannot stop because I have to fill in all the values that come afterwards. And also putting them at the end allows us to add an additional set of coordinates if we ever feel like we need one. Uh, but for now, this is okay for me. Uh, most of these are just set to zero for now. I just want to have something in there. And this big enemy I set, I define two values. And now I want to obviously um, have a preview of these in the enemy editor so I can see exactly where the bullets are appearing. So let's add that. All right, so I implemented this. I skipped over this part because honestly, it's kind of like, uh, again, some more UI work on the editors. I kind of want to keep that to a minimum. So now you can see that where the bullets for each enemy are coming out. And now it can be a little bit more, a little bit more precise. For example, now I can be like four, seems like uh, maybe even five. Seems like a more reasonable place for bullets to appear for this enemy, right? So actually, let's set each one of those enemies oops, uh, to five. All right, so I set the, the shooting locations for each enemy um, down there. Now for this big enemy, uh, let's put it like very clearly uh, on the legs, on the little legs that, that come out, on the big legs that come out in the front, uh, even though that wouldn't be necessarily the place where I would shoot them out later on the game. But for now, I just want to put them there just to see how that looks like, to, just to see the difference, right? So let's see, um, something like, no, wait. No, that's 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 FX. Uh, here, ten. Yeah, ten seems fine. Maybe nine, and then seven. Ten. Um. Eleven. Yeah, eleven seems okay. And then uh, the other location is going to be at. So that's nine, and this one is going to be at eleven. Zero, oops, nine, uh, 12. Right, so now there you have the, the locations there, the blinking locations are on the, on the tips of those, of those pipes, right? Uh, and now I want uh, this to also be something that is visible. Well, hmm, I want them to be visible in the brain editor first, and then we carry this over to the couch map. Right, so here's where he's spawning the enemy and <laughs> this list <laughs> this list of properties of the enemy is getting really, really, really long. Um, by the way, did, did the ceiling, what did you do with the ceiling? And yeah, don't, none of these really apply to, to the enemies in the brain, editor. that's okay. So we're gonna go bull, bull, bull one X. We, we, did, we do it, we hard code this. We could do an array here, but I feel like for now it's fine. And then we're gonna think about maybe some smarter ways of doing this. So we're gonna go N, mm, I wrote it down just so, I, so it's 12 or zero. So I want them to be filled with some sensical, some, some reasonable values. So in case something goes wrong, we can always, uh, we can as assume that there is some value in those properties. Okay, so now I want these to apply. And the way we do this, let's see when we're firing a bullet. So here is where we'll be executing a brain. Here is where we're firing a bullet. Patrick is here. This just adds all the bullets to the queue. And here we're adding the location. So let's go like O, X, O, Y in here on the patch shoot. And then we're going to go b dot x equals ox 
Um, we could go already, we could define the expositions already here because we are defining, ah, see, the problem is the enemy might be moving, right? Uh, okay, so that's why we kept this around. That's why I kept this around, for specifically for this purpose. So I'm thinking, no, let's, let's do it like this. Okay, we're saving the offset of, of the bullet relating in relation to the uh, enemy. We're saving that in the position of each bullet that we, that we are, that we are, that we're spawning. And then here, we're adding the position of the enemy. And that should should be it. Now, just we want to make sure that when we're doing the patch shoot, that we are supplying the patch shoot with the proper values, which is going to be. Um, do we have? Yeah, e dot b. Was it bull one x? I think it was bull one x. And then bull one y, like this. Let's see. Bull one x, bull one y. Okay, good. Patch root bull one x, bull one y. Okay, let's let's see if this works. Uh, they do seem to be coming from the enemies are moving. Obviously, oh, that does. I'm not sure if this is the correct position. Yeah, see, they're <laughs> ah, that was. The... Whew, oh man, <laughs> there were... I've been interrupted. <laughs> It's now, it's now in the evening, um, but yeah, back on t on topic. So, the bullets are coming out of the leg. That's good, but now you see the uh, muzzle flash is in the wrong spot. So we need to now fix so the mu muzzle flash actually appears where the bullet appears. Uh, let's see, let's see. This should be on on bull Q. Do bull Q right? Uh, this this function has risen in in rank. It used to be like this little thing, but now it's like this. Woo. Um, Right. This is OX, and this is where we are spawning the bull queue. And if we, there's new bulls, we're adding the muzzle flash. Okay. Okay, let's do it in a dumb way. This is the dumb way of doing this. For every new bullet, we add a new muzzle flash. Um, previously, I had like this check to spawn only one muzzle flash if there's multiple bullets spawning, but now it's like, I don't even care anymore. So there's a muzz. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a weird system that I haven't even checked. Uh, what what are the how do, does the mass work? Okay, so we're gonna go go plus m dot x uh, m dot n dot y. We just want to save the x and y like the x and y offset in the muzzle flash. Right, so let's go back to the bull queue again. This is a little bit temporary. This is not really ah okay. Wait, so we need to put it here because yeah yeah okay good. So let's do it like this. So <laughs> this is a little bit a little bit weird. Okay, uh, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this, and that's it. That's gonna that's that's, that's all that we need. Uh, that adds the bullet and that deletes the bullet. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so the bullets um, muzzle flashes now appear where the bullets appear, and then now we can see now the the bullets are being spawned <laughs> at the leg, right? Uh, so how do we spawn the bullets at a different leg? And for that, I we're hacking it, boys. We're hacking it. Uh, we are just gonna have a we're gonna use a second fire command. There's gonna be just second fire command. There's gonna be fire and fire two, and that's that's. <laughs> That's the ticket, laddie. Um, so let's see. We have fur for fire, and then there's going to be F -R -F -R two. That will fire the bullet from the second. Technically, we should maybe, if you if you really think about this, we should make make it F R one and F R two and F R three and so forth. But um, I don't want to go like change the code that we already have all the brains would have to be uh, retrofitted for for it for the fire to be changed so let, let's just not do it we can maybe do it later on when we when we start everything from from scratch but for now i'm good with that uh, so let's see right so here's fire and if that's the case we're just going to copy this code and we're just going to make it fr2 
And when that happens, um, we have this little thing here and then patch shoot, uh, and that will uh, dump different offsets into the patch shoot function. And that's, that's, that's my trick. All right, so this is a, a fire, and now I'm gonna change to far two, and now it's coming coming out of the different one. Ooh! Now actually, <clears throat> Let me let me make it so that we have yeah see <laughs> okay yeah this this is good I like this very much I like this very much um, now I do kind of want to make it so to restore the original the original uh, pattern I want to make it so that the pattern is not mirrored but that we have a pattern for the left leg and a pattern for the right leg and those are different like firing patterns um, let me do this real quick. All right, so I'm gonna export this. I'm gonna save this. Let's look at pet edit. So th this was pattern number 10, right? What did it do? It took uh, pattern number nine, which is this. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, no, this is, this is perfect. So let's just use pattern number nine and just angle it in, in, the, in the brain editor. That makes sense to me. So we need, don't, need, don't even need pattern 10 anymore. Cool. Okay, so here we're gonna say pattern number nine. And here we're gonna say pattern number nine. So now they start shooting like this. Oh, <laughs> I, like the, I like the way this looks. And then we can just pick the angle of these uh, using, using this editor. Okay, so this is wrong. Yeah, this is too much. Maybe like this, yeah, yeah, that seems good. Maybe four, because now they're really far apart. Mm, no, I, I do like the 0 0.5. And then we're gonna go 0 0.05 here. Ah. Oh. Now, the thing is here in the pad edit, when I look at this, this is actually a bit of a, hmm, there's actually two copies of each. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so we are going to add a second fear too and a nine, and a minus 0 0.04, minus 0 0.04. Oh, that's not enough, zero three. Oh, that's, 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 that's two, let's, let's do it like this. seven. Let's go one, yeah. If we make it this one, then this, this can be less, right? Even less. Mm, that's, I think, too much. And yeah, this, this looks good. And then this could be even like three. Mm, that's too much. Yeah, this seems cool. So let's copy those values over. Let's create another fear. Um, let's do it like this. And then 0 0.12. Does it look symmetrical to you? That doesn't look symmetrical to me. Maybe it is symmetrical. Maybe it's just like optical illusions. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get down to the bottom of this later on. But for now, um, let us move this over to the couch map and I'm gonna speed this up. Let's go. Alright, so um, I think this is broadly speaking it. There's one little thing uh, that, that is not there currently, so you can see that I'm, I'm shooting, everything is good. Um, the enemies don't have a muzzle flash. I don't have that in my couch map. The bullets are just coming out of the enemies, there's no muzzle flash happening. Uh, so I might want to change that a little bit maybe. Uh, let, let me first see, yeah, okay, so see, this works perfectly. Uh, there was one problem that I ran into that I wanted to point out, and that is uh, mirroring. So we said that sometimes enemies are mirrored, and when the enemies are mirrored, then obviously they should be shooting in, like if it's the enemy shooting like this and it's mirrored, then it should be shooting like this, right? Um, but it also means that it should be shooting from the other side, <laughs> I think. I was not quite sure how to implement this. Um, the way I ended up doing this, I, I tried to do this in, in um, uh, Spawn N. 
right? When I we're spawning enemies, that there's this big function. So down here, you could multiply this with a mirroring value. The x um, values could be multiplied with a mirror value. So um, the spawning locations of the bullets are mirrored themselves the values of themselves are mirrored you could do that but i try to do that and the problem is that it, it messes with the ternary here and i want to i kind of want to keep this around um so what i did instead is when i'm spawning the bullets in the firing um in a brain do brain function here's where i multiply it with the mirror variable so the spawning locations are mirrored but not in the data but when we actually spawning them um there's one last thing I want to add, and um, as I said, we don't have the uh, uh, muzzle flash, but we do now have like the little bubble effects. Maybe we can just reuse them. Uh, let me see. Shwave, right? It's shwave. Yeah, yeah. Let's get this code out, and let's put this in double Q. Maybe, maybe that's going to be enough. Oh man. Um, like this. Draw shwave x this this. Just we're gonna keep the, everything around. It's gonna be just like the like the shwaves. Um, but how do we do this? That uh, we have the p lock, right? Oh, that's ha. Huh, see, mm. so the p lock is the player lock, and that locks um, something sprite to the player but now we might want to actually have this a little bit more complicated so let's see let us let's look at p lock uh, so here p lock is true uh-huh uh, this is this is the 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 muzzle flash of the player so let's set it to not p lock but to PSPR not true but to PSPR uh, we're gonna set it to PSPR uh, and then here when we do the p lock we're gonna say p lock -lock x y. let's just see if mu the muzzle flash is broken now <laughs> yes <laughs> oh all right 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 p dot p lock p dot p lock yeah okay it's not broken that's good that's what we want to see okay so now I want to do this with this and with the shwaves. This is the situation uh, where we might want to do this uni universal p-lock. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it around. So this will get, get us the particle, and then that's, that adds, and then we're gonna draw the particle at underscore x and underscore y, like this. So the shwave now can be also p-locked, and that means that we can draw the shwave. No, that's bullet cancel. Um, do bull Q. Right here, uh, draw shwave um, and then P lock equals N. Okay, you see there is a bit of a shwave, but the shwave is not, not big enough. So let us just make it like this. So you can see, yeah, now now we have we have bigger bigger explosions. Let's make it 0 0.8 or something. Nah. Let's let's bring back bring, bring back to seven and make the max, max maximum age a little bit smaller. It just looks a little bit sci-fi, but maybe that's okay because it's supposed to be like this cheesy, uh, this cheesy uh, sci-fi I think. Okay, good. Uh, we might do better uh, muzzle flashes later in the future, but for now I, we just had this type of particle, so I really use it for this. And again, that's like, like 30 tokens. 
creating things is is expensive creating particles expensive but yeah that basically fixes the bullet origin thing now on the retargeting thing i was thinking about this and that's mm. so the problem is broadly speaking how we're going to do the handoff between patch shoot and do bull queue do these two functions work hand in hand right right now in patch shoot when we set the angle to 99 it's a sign that we want to aim this pattern towards the player right and so then we calculate the angle and we generate this entire pattern based on that angle and then later when we spawning the bullets uh, they are fired in that angle that we calculated at the beginning and sometimes if the bullets are delayed for example if you shoot like five bullets in uh, half a second uh, distance and boom 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 right they will all fire in the same direction they won't follow the player along so we might have patterns where we want to just like with one command fire a whole bunch of bullets and we want, 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 might want to have a situation where the bullets are actually following the player not just shooting in the direction that the player was at um we could do that we could like have maybe like a special angle that means like not just shoot at the player but also keep following the player as they go along and in this case we would generate uh, an angle that angle would be zero here uh, so we, the, by, the bullet would be fired straight down and then here when we actually generate the bullet here we would we would um, look up the angle to the player and then add the angle of the bullet to the angle of the player and then at the moment the bullet is is, uh, is spawned it would get like its angle updated that would work i could do it it would cost us some code and then i think i'm not sure if we actually need this this is the thing and read the retargeting thing i'm not actually sure that we actually need this because i can replicate this effect in the brain editor i could just do like a loop in the brain editor and then just fire a single bullet multiple times aimed at the player that's to totally possible in the brain editor um so i'm not quite sure which situation we're anticipating which situation we actually want i can imagine a situation where in a in like a boss fight I want to do a rapid fire, target the rapid fire, and doing a loop would be inconvenient. I can manage the situation like this. So if this situation arises, I will do an update that allows, allows us to do the re retargeting, as I said. For now, I'm just going to leave things as they are because in the test run, it felt okay. It felt, it didn't feel like I needed to do the retargeting stuff. So I don't think I need it right now. Uh, I have a plan for the retargeting. It's de definitely possible. And if we need it, we will add it. Lazy devs, right? <laughs> it's in the name. Lazy way out. Uh, I don't want to over-engineer the entire thing too much. It's already a little bit over-engineered, I think. For example, the following, I'm not, not sure about if we really need the following. Anyways, let's talk about enemy fire sounds. That's something that I definitely want to add. So, um, and again, I was thinking about how to do this. There's multiple ways in which we can do this. Um, we could add the enemy fire sounds, for example, to, to the actual bullet patterns. Like each bullet pattern, uh, each bullet base bullet uh, has a sound associated with it. And then if you spawn that bullet, you play that sound, right? That's, that's totally doable. Problem with that is if you spawn multiple bullets, then you play that sound multiple times. And I, I don't like, uh, I really want to avoid playing too many sounds at the same time. Um, and also we might to have the same bullet for different type of shots like the bullets might be might be a tiny little bullet but sometimes it's a shotgun sometimes it's rapid fire you know sometimes it's it's just like a sniper bullet flying very fast and the same bullet might have different uses in different patterns and so like setting a certain sound for a bullet might not be accurate I was also thinking maybe putting this in, into the enemy editor. So enemies have sounds associated with like firing sounds associated with them. And I think that would be okay. But then again, in a boss fight, we might have a situation where um, a boss is fire has multiple shots, right? And then which sound is going to be played then? It's kind of like weird, right? I think the best solution right now, and I, I don't know, uh, is to make a bullet, uh, an enemy sound, and turn that into a uh, brain command. We're going to have a brain command that fires the sound, that, that just plays the sound. I think that would be maybe the easiest thing to do right now. And if that somehow is not flexible enough or not good enough, then we can always try something more uh, sophisticated. All right, so before... 
before we do that, now uh, this introduces a bit of a problem. Now we need to import the sounds from Kaushmap into the <laughs> brain editor. <laughs> <laughs> because that that's how you will see you know we get a preview of the sound um a little bit awkward but let me let me first create like a shooting sound for the enemy let's try something like this it's very prominent i'm just using this it's just like one note that i'm using this this effect on this um this drop effect on Let's try that. So this is now um, sound effect number seven. Now here's the thing, brain edit doesn't have any sound effects. So first we need to find out how to include or import um, all of the sound data into into the from the couch map. Um, let me first do like this. This imports the sprite sheet, but I also now want to import the the sound data. And I will. I, I kind of have want to know somehow <laughs> that this worked. So let's do like. Um, let me see. Uh, this is like a bogus sound effect zero. Okay. I don't want to hear that sound effect. That's the, that's now the trick. That's now the debug. So I need to find out what are the addresses for um, the sound effects. All right. So according to Pico 8 Wiki, sound effects are uh, this. So they are, yeah, first is destination, the, the uh, second. Oh, first is destination, the second is source. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Source and destination is going to be the same. So it's 32,000 in, in hexadecimal. And how long are they? Oh gosh, now I have to do like a, a hexadecimal calculator. It's 10 FF. Okay, let's see if this worked. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so this loads the sound effect. So it's 32,000, um, 32,000, that's the beginning of the sound effects and uh, uh, 10 FF is the length of the sound effects. Cool. Um, so now that we have the sound effects in here, I want to introduce uh, this idea of, uh, of a command for sound. Let's call this SND. That makes sense to me. And then, Let's do a do brain. And then if we do SND, then we play a sound. So let's let's do it right right after uh, fire. SND. Then and this could be really easy. We're gonna go S SFX par one, and that's gonna be it. Uh, we're going to put it on channel number three. That's it. So now when we're firing, we also add an SND uh, seven. Easy. Uh, and then here, when we're firing, we're going to do S S N S N D seven. And then here when you're firing. All right, let me add an SND7 on every fire that's happening. Ah, see, we now we're running into an issue here because here we have the SOM modifier and the SOM modifier only triggers sometimes. And, ah, uh, unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, so yeah, hmm. We're gonna have to think about this. Maybe the sound modifier is, is not good after all. Um, but yeah, no firing sounds on these bad boys. Um, but this one will have a fire sound. See, now this sound effect doesn't quite match. So we, we need to maybe design a different sound effect for that. All right, so let, let us export this. And again, let's bring this stuff into into the couch map.
Right, so it's kind of easy. We just need to find the do brain. There's the do brain, and then here in the do brain, we're just gonna add the sound. Oh, I wanted to add the sound after. After ah oh, man, it really bugs me that the sum won't work because of that. I need to think about this. Okay, but for now this this works okay. Uh, let's try this. Yeah, you, you can see how the sound effects get lost. But also the sound effects is not good. So uh, usually this is like a your usual usual laser sound. Something we could do is we could try to make it so that it's not linked to a channel, so it always fires. I I'm do not I do not feel those those sounds. I do not feel those sounds. They are not good. Let me see. This is one of the one of the episodes where we let's try this. Oh. Yeah, we don't really hear them. They are being swallowed a little bit. I will need to investigate this, but we have the opportunity now, and maybe we have to find the right sound effects. Maybe we need to do some kind of sound priority because I think the uh, impact sounds and the shooting sounds kind of overwrite the enemy shooting sounds. I want to hear the enemy shooting sounds. Uh, should have a higher priority than the impact sounds or the enemy firing, uh, the players firing sounds. Um, so we need to maybe add some priority stuff to this, or maybe we need to design the sound effect better. But for now, it's good. It's good. I'm, 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 I'm fine with with this version of it that we have right now. Uh, we can figure stuff out later. And this brings us to the conclusion of this part. Let me go real quick through uh, our master plan and let's see what comes up next episode. All right, so the master plan. Let me go quickly through all this stuff because we have most of the stuff figured out. System fixes, uh, scheduled brain, this brain decision on, on spawn level, yes. Enemy mirroring, yes. Enemy go to command, yes. Ground enemies, we have them. Movements relative to ground, yes. Drawing order, yes. Collision, yes. Ceiling, yes. Pattern editor, um, I want to easy manipulate bullet speed. We can do that. Can we merge a speed and burst? Yes. Sound, repetitive explosion, yes. Enemy sounds, we just did them. Not ideal, but there are, there are some sounds. And maybe update splash in mass and mass and draw. We figured this out, or I figured this out. Um, so this is a relic from the time where mass and splash were in their separate arrays. Uh, we already overhauled them and turned them into particles. This is this is already uh, uh, old stuff. Editor fixes, enemy preview, yes. Animation preview, yes. Brain edit, uh, own better on staging, yes. Copy brain, yes. Move undo, yes. Click move, yes. Copy pattern, yes. Uh, low priority breaks uh, when no enemies. Uh, we haven't fixed that, it's gonna be fine. Deleting brains should be easier, we actually did that. Now, new things, we have dead zones, we have cut off, we have hover effect, well, we don't have a hover effect. We have a ground shadow. Uh, I'm gonna actually do a leftover and I'm, I'm gonna add the hover effect to that because we might want to have that i'm not sure um bullet cancelling we do have bullets not from the center of the sprite we have that freeze die invisible overhaul um i want to also add this at the end now after all this stuff is done, the, oh, the easy stuff is done, now comes the hard stuff. And this is why I wanted to, this is something that comes up in the next episode. So as a next step, I want to figure out, you know, what our special abilities are, uh, what our pickups are, what, is, what the scoring system is, like what all the gameplay details are. I want to find out all the leftover, <laughs> the very crucial leftover uh, gameplay details. Right now we have a very vanilla kind of shmup. It's just shooting and, and getting shot at, right? But now I want to like refine the gameplay, kind of nail down what the actual gameplay is of the of the of the of the game. And I'm gonna do that by making a bunch of prototypes. I have some ideas, I will write them down. I'm gonna make a bunch of prototypes and I'm gonna send them out to people. I'm gonna try them out myself and I'm gonna see what works, what's more fun, what is actually easy to implement, and so forth. You know, let's just these are the different things that we have to weigh against each other. Um, but that's something that comes up on the next episode.
but already I wanted to clarify that all this will happen in kind of owl mode. I won't walk you through the process of you know, meticulously programming all those prototypes because they will be probably very janky and all, a lot of the stuff will just land in the bin, right? Like, because eventually I will find out the gameplay that I want to go for and all the other stuff I did would be just like dropped away, right? So uh, I will focus more on, you know, the planning, the feedback, the insights I get from the prototype, the process of, of, of the prototypes and less on the actual implementation of the prototypes. And also, this is one of the reasons why the freeze, die, and invisive overhaul. I want to shift this behind after the prototypes, because after the prototypes are done and we have decided what we want to do, uh, some of the effects that we, or like the gameplay stuff that we have, will maybe tap into the freeze stuff, because the freeze stuff is like, you know, when you get hit, there's like hit stop. And maybe we're going to have abilities that also trigger hit stops. And, and once we've nailed down the abilities that we actually want to have, we're going to have to figure out how they uh, merge, how we're going to merge them with the existing systems that we have right now. So that would be a better place to do the um, this kind of stuff. Right. Yes. So this all this stuff is coming up on the next episode. We have prepared the basics, the simple stuff. Now the hard stuff comes up. Yes. But for now, I will say a big thank you and huge shout out. Thank you so much for all those people who are supporting this show on coffee.com who are making literally making this show possible. Thank you so much for your support. On this episode, there's not going to be a question, but I want to do a shout out, a shout out to long time support of the show and prominent face, well, I guess not face, but prominent contributor to the Discord. So Squidlight uh, recently decided finally to abandon his game. Uh, he decided that uh, it was, it, he got stuck. He had to uh, abandon his project. Maybe he will return to it eventually. But I want to show you this. So this is one of the gifts that came out at the end, uh, in the end phase of him working on that game. And he was working on this beautiful, beautiful uh, boss enemy. I've already shown you the boss enemy before, but this gift shows some Oh, some really excellent gameplay stuff. Like there's those mines exploding and you see how the boss enemy is like consists of multiple things, multiple like limbs and they, you know, move out and they uh, move like behind the enemy, right? Like that's, it looks, and the enemy is like, has like this beautiful organic jerky movement. And it, I don't know, I always thought this was an, an incredible looking enemy. And maybe we're gonna see some, uh, I don't know, maybe Squidlight will post some prototypes so we can actually <laughs> experience this enemy because it's, it, I think it looks amazing. It's, uh, if anything, that is a really beautiful result from that project. All right, so we are about to find out the hard hitting questions. More on that on the next Jumbo episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.